Hey guys, RC here, back with Bullbound College Football, our journeyman save, and we are into the offseason now. I wanted to come back before I advance so we could take a look at some final things from Season 2. Uh, so our offense ended up number 42 in the country. Our defense ended up number 77 in the country. Uh, Williams threw for 3,201 yards, 12 touchdowns, but 13 interceptions. A good number, if you're looking, what's a good number, RC? Basically, a 2-to-1 ratio, touchdowns to interceptions, is good. So, 13 interceptions is high, but if, if you had, you know, you'd like something like 24 touchdowns to, you know, 10 interceptions or less. And then the, the higher quality players you have, you'd like somewhere in that, thir you know, 25 to 30 touchdown and five to six interceptions at the most. Uh, only 364 yards for Miller, our leading uh, rusher. Now, he did average 4.49 yards per carry and three touchdowns. So maybe that's an indicator we need to be a little more balanced next year and not so pass-oriented. Problem is, I like being pass-oriented, and that's what I like to build towards. So We'll see. We'll just have to see. Uh, let's take a look at the bowl games. So Louisiana Monroe played in the New Orleans Bowl, which is the automatic bowl game that the Sun Belt champion gets. They played Rice and beat them 20-16. to 16. So that was a good performance for them. If we switch over to the top 25 and then get into the bowl games. Uh, so these are the real bowl names. Now, not all of these exist anymore. But we're also looking for playoffs, which don't start until later. All right, so there's the playoff semifinals. Remember, it's the final four. or Yeah, the, it, there's four teams, right? So Florida and Washington, it went to overtime. Now, overtime rules are a little different. And, uh, you know, just in a nutshell, each team takes turns uh, from, the, from the opponent's 20-yard line, so from right on the edge of the red zone. and if the first team scores a touchdown, then the second team gets the ball. If they score a touchdown, then they go to a second overtime, uh, and you know then it continues. Now in a in the third overtime period, uh, which they went to, you have to go for a touchdown. You cannot kick a field goal. Uh, so you can see with ten points, they kicked a field goal in their second overtime. Also, you do not, do not kick extra points. You have to go for two points, and that's how they got 18. So seven points, a touchdown, and an extra point. Then a field goal made it 10, and then the touchdown with a two-point conversion makes it 18. And so I really don't feel they should add these scores into the final. I think they should just give them one point and make it, you know, whatever the final is. In this case, it would have been 25-24. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, just because it pads the stats. I mean, you get, you, you know, you get all the stats for that game, you know, that period, that overtime. Uh, in the other one, uh, in the semifinals for the Rose Bowl, Wisconsin uh, lost to Ohio State 27-24, even though they scored 16 unanswered points. And then in the championship game, it was Washington taking the number one ranking and the trophy 17-10 over Ohio State in that game. And again, you can look at the stats here and you can kind of get a feel. All right, these are the best teams in the country. You know, this is what their quarterbacks, running backs are doing. So that, you know, then you can kind of judge for yourself. All right, we're going to check out the award winners. We'll go through this real quick. There's your national first team All Americans, first team defense All Americans. Pause it if you want to really look through the list. There's your second team offense, second team defense, and finally, third teams. The Heisman Trophy went to Steve Langley out of Tennessee. Uh, he started 13 games, completed 64.6% .6 of his throws, 3,794 yards, 28 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. And there you see a 3-to-1 ratio, basically, is what's you know, successful. And then he had five rushing touchdowns with 1,000 rushing yards. Uh, there is your Benaric winner. 
as the top defensive lineman, the Davy O'Brien Award, which typically repeats as the Heisman a lot of times. Uh, Doak Walker is the best running back. Belentnikov goes to the best receiver. John Mackey goes to the best tight end. Vince Lombardi goes to the best offensive lineman. Outland Trophy is defensive. Chuck Bednarik, that must be the defensive player of the year. Okay. Uh, Outland Trophy is the best defensive lineman. Dick Buckus Award is uh, the best linebacker. Jim Thorpe is the best secondary player on the defense. Lou Groza, the best place kicker. Ray Guy, the best punter. And Mosi Tatupu, the best special teams player. So there you go there. Let's take a look at our conference, since that's mostly what we're worried about. So there's a look there. Uh, we do get William Shaw at guard. On the first team, Sunbelt. Robert Tierna at cornerback, first team defense in the conference. David Henderson, starting strong safety. Paul Garcia, the starting punter. Second team, Carlos Williams at quarterback. Joseph White at receiver. Raimundo Fleming at tight end. And uh, he had a really good season. Remember, he missed quite a few games with that injury. Ricky Farrell, second team Sunbelt defense. And there's your third teams right there. All right, guys. Well, that's the season. We'll go through the stats here real quick. So passing-wise, so Williams, 3,200 yards, 13 interceptions, 12 touchdowns. Uh, Weaver, who we had high hopes for, 2-to-1 ra uh, ratio, but it was the opposite direction, two interceptions to each touchdown. And Layton was 2 and a half to one not very good 364 yards 4.49 so again even though he's only a red player one a one star player uh he had a pretty decent year uh could have been better but he had a pretty decent year 67 catches led the way for white fleming had 53 uh nobody really dominated but we had three you know three guys at 600 yards or more and we had seven touchdowns for White to lead the team there. 21 pancake blocks for Shaw. So you can tell as a three-star yellow player, uh, he's you know dominant at this level. Kicking, let's take a look at him because, all right, he was 19 of 20 on extra points, 8 of 10 inside the 30, 8 of 8 inside the 40, 2 of 9 over 40. So, yeah, so we want to probably dial him back to a 39 max. Just horrible, horrible, horrible. <laughs> There's your defense. That's sorted by tackles. Uh, the difference between you can have multiple players get credited with a tackle. Uh, so let's say two guys tackle the same the ball carrier. They both get credit with a tackle or at least a half tackle. But a solo tackle is where you are the only player making the tackle. Uh, assists is how many, you know, how many times you helped another player. And then sacks, that's getting the quarterback on a pass behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, yards lost by sack. The more the better. Stuffs is, hit, is tackling a running back behind the line of scrimmage for a loss play. Yards lost by stuff, again. That's going to be less than sacks normally, just because the running backs already coming up to the line. The quarterback's usually running away from the line. Hurries, uh, deflected passes, forced fumbles, passes defl uh, deflected or defensed. So you can see our uh, Tierna and Nash. By the way, Nash, we didn't talk about him much this year. But he started all 12 games as a freshman. Remember, this was our email guy this year. And he's only one out of four. But he played. Remember, we said that's going to be one of your better players. So 38 tackles, 25 solo, 13 assists, three stuffs, 16 defensed passes. Uh, but then he also had uh, 13 missed tackles. So that's where you have an opportunity to tackle the player. 
and oops, I missed. <laughs> or oops, he got away from me. At this level, probably oops, I missed. So that is that. So you guys have seen the stats, the award winners. Nothing else for us to really look at. So let's go ahead and advance the stage. There is our report card. So team performance, we still got an F, because remember, we were projected to win the conference, which we did not. We finished fourth. So too many Fs will get fired at some point. Uh, we got an F in talent, uh, which is the overall composition of our team talent level. Recruiting, we got an F. Not much we could do there. Board expectations, though, we got a B. So even though the, we didn't live up to expectations, we still got a B grade. They were pretty happy with us. A C for prestige and a C minus overall. Now that C minus overall, I think, is what keeps us at a 59 rather than letting it. If it would have been a C, I think we would have gotten a point back. It is what it is. And no job offers. So unlike football manager where you can go into the job category and see what available jobs are you also get emails in football manager in this game you only can apply for a job if they approach you so a lot of guys in football manager do that use that as a kind of an in-house rule but in bowl bound that is the only way to get another job and that is to get an email and you can see we did not uh, we are going to lose 10000 in our budget from this year. And you can see the potential declaring underclassmen uh, or players considering declaring for the draft. We aren't going to have anybody in there. So nothing big there. All right, let me do coach hiring, and we'll see if we can get some coaches if I need to do that. And then we'll get into recruiting. So I will see you guys back here at the end of recruiting in week 18 for player training. Uh, and I'll actually show you the email for week 17 with our final signings. We'll take a look at those players, uh, rankings, ability levels. Uh, we will also take a look at any new staff members. So you hold tight for just a minute and give me a little bit of time to go do this. All right, we are back to show off our shiny new offensive coordinator. We forked out some scratch for him, uh, $525,000. We had gone after another guy that was a little bit cheaper, uh, but he signed with another team. Uh, in week two of the three-week period. So I really d dived in and looked at guys that were talented enough uh, that, you know, maybe cost me a little bit more, but that would be a, a huge upgrade. So what I see about this guy is motivation's pretty good. It's average. Offensive game planning is average. I usually like that to be blue if I can get it. Uh, at this level, beggars can't be choosers. What I do like here is he can really scout quarterbacks and running backs. So that means when I see a grade on a running back or a quarterback, it's going to be pretty good. So that in and of itself is going to give me a pretty good indicator of what kind of quarterback that's going to be. Not as good, below average on line and receivers. Okay. That's the trade off. But again, quarterback to me, most important thing to have here is to be able to scout a good one and then definitive upgrades. Because you remember, we were red or orange in every development category. I think we had three reds and one orange. So we've traded three reds for three greens, which is basically a four star. This is good, above average. So, you know, remember it's blue, green, yellow, orange, red. So, yellow's average, green is one level up, blue, two levels up. I think we've really upgraded, and I view that as worth the money. I'm going to have less money to recruit each week. And that's okay. It'll be a trade off because the guys that we get, we should be able to develop on the offensive side of the ball. On the defensive side, this is the guy we had. So he can already develop defensive line and linebackers. I didn't need to spend any money there. And we went after another special teams coach. I think he would have been actually a little bit better, and he would have only cost $100,000. 
but he took another job there. All right, transfers, recruiting, got a lot to do. I'll be right back. All right, we have pulled off a little bit of a coup for our defense in transfers. Now, we went after quite a few guys. We went after a quarterback, a running back, a tackle, a guard, a center, and then we went after the two linebackers and a cornerback, I think. Uh, so eight players total, and all we got was the two linebackers, but I count that as a win. So uh, Murphy uh, is out of uh, Peabody High in Alexandria in central Louisiana. Uh, six potential, already a two overall, and he's going to redshirt this year and be able to develop. And then uh, Kraus, outside linebacker from Phoenix High in Braithwaite, Louisiana, three and three current, six potential. Both of those guys are going to be huge upgrades uh, if we take a look at by position. So there is our there's our inside linebacker. So Costello is uh, the best of the bunch, and he's a six. Murphy matches him, and Costello will be a senior next year. So that gives us a heir apparent for at least two seasons at inside linebacker, and then at outside linebacker. Uh, Kraus is already by far the best linebacker on the roster. Hayes is cur better currently, but Kraus has the more upside. And again, he's a sophomore red shirt, so he'll be back as a junior. Remember, juniors uh, will not transfer away. So I think we did really good getting those two guys. All right, we do have uh, 21 scholarships. But you can see we've only got $44,500 to recruit with. So we're going to have to be picky choosy uh, about who we go after. So let me get that done and we'll come back and take a look at who I'm able to land this year. Oh, one thing before we jump into it, let's look at my watch list. We do get, have a guy, a Hughes is a defensive end. And let's sort by ranking. So remember Nash last year was in the 1200 range. So Hughes is 1196, so a little bit better. And I do want to go ahead and pop money, max him out with an offer right out of the gate. And uh, so that leaves me 39,020 scholarships. Uh, and you can take a look at what our needs are. Pretty heavy on the offensive side of the ball. Not quite so much on the defense. Really, all we need is a uh, cornerback. Uh, so I'll be heavy into offense, which ties in with our new offensive coordinator that we'll be able to develop some of these guys, maybe. So let me get cracking. All right, I am back from recruiting. You may notice a little change. Uh, shout out to one of the uh, you viewers, uh, Jeffrey Cronauer. Uh, made me think of Adrian Cronauer from... Uh, the Robin Williams character. Uh, but anyway, so I've done what he suggested. I've reset my, my screen here to 1024 by 768. Unfortunately, you can see the uh, two to three inches on each side is cut off. That's as far as my mouse will go uh, on this display. Uh, and I've had to readjust it a little bit to get the bottom in here. Hopefully, I am off to the side, and it appears that I am, so that's good. All right, so we've reached the end of recruiting. We've picked up 16 commitments. Uh, I still have five scholarships left. That is what it is. Let's check the email and our final recruit signings here. Uh, so uh, I, I have tested the recording on this part since I've adjusted the settings, and it looks like it is larger so you can see it. So let's get into it. We have signed Ernesto Hughes, defensive end, two stars out of LA, California. That was our email guy, ranked 1196. And then uh, we signed Bradford Gould, a two star out of Oakdale, 1734. John Barry, a two star out of Arcadia, ranked 1368, which that's a pretty good get, pretty close to our email guy. James Story, a two-star defensive back from McKinley High in Baton Rouge. Mike Smith, a two-star quarterback out of Baker. 
ranked 1183. Jeremy Richardson, a two-star out of Fort Myers, Florida. John Rodriguez, two-star out of Upper Room Christian in Lauderhill, Florida. Richard Jeffers, a two-star offensive tackle from uh, Community College in Paris, Tennessee. Uh, so he's a JUCO. Stephen Halsey, two-star quarterback out of Virginia. Uh, Tyrone Martinez, two-star running back out of uh, Vermont. John Crawford, a one-star running back out of Tennessee. Lewis Bryan, a one-star tackle out of Arkansas. Steven Ruiz, a one-star quarterback out of Oregon. Michael Bolin, a one-star receiver out of High Point, North Carolina, pretty close to where I used to live for a little while. And Kenneth Brown, one-star out of St. Joseph, Louisiana. Cancer Alley down there, a lot of uh, uh, chemical and petroleum uh, factories down there. Uh, and they actually do call that area uh, Cancer Alley. Uh, but anyway, that is a look at the at the recruits. Let's take a look at the team roster. And there are all the incoming recruits. So we do have some three, you know, three and four star. We do have one five star in Smith. Now, one thing you may notice: a lot of quarterbacks in this class. Not all going to play quarterback. We are going to retrain uh, at least two of them. Uh, one, I believe I have penciled in as a running back, one as a receiver. Uh, so let's take a look at them here real quick. So Stephen Halsey, six foot five. Uh, you can see his accuracy, touch, and arm strength are non-existent, but he has very good acceleration, speed. Uh, running is not bad, but his hands are over 50. I'm thinking he's going to be a receiver. And Mike Smith, again, below 50 in all the passing categories. Uh, again, uh, really solid hands. He could be a receiver as well. Steven Ruiz, not sure where I'm going to put him. I don't see him being a quarterback. Doesn't look like I actually signed that guy that I thought could be a quarterback. Uh, but maybe we put him in as a running back is what I'm thinking there. So anyway, let me go look at that. I will get training done. When we come back next episode, we'll take a look at training results. Uh, you guys can com come back and compare to this uh, with, your, uh, with our results. And don't forget, Murphy will be playing uh, for us this coming season as his transfer red shirt will be lifted. And anybody else that we have? Oh, and we do have the two new... Uh, no, I'm sorry. We did. He's uh, going to be sitting out this year. So, yep, that other red shirt for last year is already off. And I don't remember who it was. All right, well, we're going to end this episode there. So I've gotten through recruiting. Just wanted to show you who we got. So anyway, uh, Jeffers looks to be the best of the bunch currently. Two out of two. Uh, he is a JUCO player. But we do have uh, do have some guys that have some potential. So we'll find out if that helps us at all this year, and we'll see how they do in training and position uh, changing as well. Hit the like button, subscribe, and we'll be back for the opening of our new season here at Southwestern Louisiana or Louisiana Lafayette. It'll always be Southwestern to me because that was the name before when I went to school there. Have a good one, guys. Bye.